My name is Jessica Clark. I'm the assistant farm manager at the Poughkeepsie Farm Project. And the Poughkeepsie Farm Project is a nonprofit that has an educational mission uh, and also a working CSA farm. We are not certified organic, but we do try to use organic practices. We are also what's called a certified naturally grown, which is a Hudson Valley born certification process. It's a peer, peer to peer certification. So we have other farmers come out and make sure that we're growing in hopefully a sustainable manner. You know, on the whole, I don't know if it's me. You know, I would say that it, it actually does seem like the season gets hotter faster <laughs> earlier on, and it does seem like, you know, we don't really have cold, cold weather until later in the season. Notice climate change in terms of the disease susceptibility of our plants. And I've seen definitely an increase in the number of different diseases and pests that can affect us here in the Northeast. Certainly when we have very extreme weather events and certainly when we have sort of these very strange, you know, very either early summers or very late summers or very, very late falls so that it doesn't actually get to freezing until until February, you know, I'm sure that that extends how strong the disease pressure can be the next year and the pest pressure. And heat stress actually can be a big factor for a lot of our brassicas. And in general, that's something you deal with as a farmer and the changing of the seasons. Spring to summer brassicas are always going to be a challenge, but they're even more of a challenge. And they're a good indicator in terms of crops because they do not like a lot of variability in their weather. They pretty much like the weather to always be you know, relatively mild, not too wet, not too dry, and pretty much the same temperature all the time, and that's really just not what you get here. So we're, we're already dealing with a change in climate, and when you get to a point in the spring where it goes from being, I just remember, you know, what was it, two years ago when we would have 80 degree weather in early March and then go freezing in April. Crazy things can happen in the season. It's almost like predicting for unpredictability. Having that kind of reinforces the fact that we, you know, should have diversified market areas and also diversified crops. You don't have to be as diversified as a CSA because certainly that can be a little bit overboard in some areas, but certainly to rely on one crop is, you know, it's like playing a game of dice. Like sometimes it's just not gonna come up your turn. And if, certainly if you don't have crop insurance and, and even if you do have crop insurance, you know, it can be a very risky, you know, game to play. You know, I know people who are in the orchard business in, the, in Ulster County and even they're kind of going more into agritourism. They're going more into different crops, different specialty crops, just to have something on the side that they can rely on. You know, it kind of makes one as a farmer more bold to say like, oh, well, we'll just see how early we can get tomatoes if it's going to be warmer earlier, or we'll see how late we can have crops, you know, into the fall. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but you never know, and probably something else is going to fail in the meantime. I personally like to also make sure that our organic matter is high in our soils to begin with, so that it has that uh, humus and organic matter that's capable of holding water, as well as as much as possible, keeping our soil covered in a cover crop when we can, and um, and then even when we're tilling in that cover crop to try and choose moments where we're not losing too much soil. Certainly we're thinking about carbon sequestration and being able to lock in a lot of that carbon into our soils, partially because it's good for the earth and partially because it's good for our plants to have that much, you know, to have a high carbon soil. You know, how can you deny the idea that agriculture is a very large disturbance in a natural ecology? So to be able to balance that with some of the aspects that you would get in something like a forest or a prairie land is very powerful to think about and to try and do. You come into the idea of sustainable farming knowing that, you know, you're not messing things up too bad. <laughs>